daily office devotions. I'm Reggie Kidd, joining you from inside the Cathedral Church of St. Luke in Orlando, Florida. Thanks for joining me on this Wednesday following Trinity Sunday. Given where Easter falls this year, our readings should have us in proper six of the daily lectionary. But my teaching schedule with my friends at the Robert E. Weber Institute for Worship Studies has caused me to scramble things a bit. This week, we are contemplating passages from proper four. I want to give some attention to the early chapters of the book of Ecclesiastes and of Paul's letter to the Galatians. Thanks for your flexibility. Next week, we will be back on track with readings from the daily lectionaries, proper seven. To everything there is a season. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. How lovely it would be to be so perfectly attuned to the need of any moment that you instinctively know whether to plant or pluck, kill or heal, break or build, embrace or not, keep or throw away, be quiet or speak up, love or hate, make war or make peace. I don't know anywhere in all literature in which this ideal is more elegantly expressed than in these verses. That which is has already been. That which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 15. But in any given moment, how does anyone know exactly when, for instance, to be quiet or speak up? From 1 Kings, we think of Solomon as having precisely this sense. He asked the Lord for wisdom, and the Lord made him the wisest person on earth. 1 Kings chapter 4, verses 29 through 34. To illustrate the point, we're given the story of the case of two prostitutes disputing over one dead baby and one live baby. 1 Kings 3, 16 through 38. That's all well and good. However, here in Ecclesiastes, we are given the other side of the coin. What's it like, asks Solomon in this book, when that gift doesn't come, when prayers for wisdom seem to bounce off the sky, when the face of God cannot be discerned, when you just don't know whether to plant or pluck, kill or heal, when you look for answers and all you get is, that which is already has been, that which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. Ecclesiastes 3.15 what? The dead end that this chapter of Ecclesiastes explores is that of having the ethical ideal in principle, but lacking insight into God's mind to know how to pull it off. Simon and Garfunkel have been there. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. We've all been there. Right now, we're probably all there to some extent. Return to public life or stay hunkered down. Speak out and risk pouring gasoline on the fire or be quiet and risk giving way to the haters. Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. Matthew chapter 14, verse 8. Then there's the beheading of John the Baptist. He knew his mission was to point the way to the coming of the kingdom. The king who happened to be his own cousin, had come. But as for the kingdom, unjustly and cruelly, John the Baptist is martyred before he gets to see kingdom come. It's a long line of martyrs, isn't it? Early in June, in the course of remembrances in the liturgical calendar, these names come before us. Justin Martyr, June 1st. Blandina and the Martyrs of Lyon, June 2nd. The Martyrs of Uganda, June 3rd. And big enough sinner, but Jesus-loving George Big Floyd Floyd, victim of police violence in May of 2020. And only too recently, one of my doctoral students at the Robert E. Weber Institute of Worship Studies, Emmanuel Belea, one of the kindest, sweetest spirits God ever led into ministry, and his wife, Juliana, martyred in Nigeria during a vicious ethnic war. These deaths are mystifying and cruel, seemingly pointless, 
If the world worked the way it should, everything would get done in its own time. But in the world as it is, things happen out of season. Dancing when there should be mourning, killing when there should be healing, war when there should be peace, throwing stones when there should be gathering, and all along, the face of God seems sphinx-like, his purposes hidden, that which is already has been, that which is to be already is, and God seeks out what has gone by. If the horizon of Ecclesiastes were all there were, these words would be a counsel of despair. The Herods would win, the white cop and his complicit partners with a knee on the black man would win, the ethnic cleansers would win, but there is a broader horizon beyond the reach of Ecclesiastes Solomon, and there is no counsel of despair. Something that George Floyd's Houston pastor, Patrick P.T. Nungualo, said was amazing. After Cain's superiority and animosity drove him to kill Abel, Scripture tells us, The Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Genesis chapter 4, verse 10. If you fast forward 2,000 years, there's another innocent sufferer whose blood spoke of better things than Abel's. Jesus' blood says he can redeem us through these dark and perilous times. One day, when the last drop of innocent blood has been shed and the great reckoning takes place, we will find that not one has been wasted. That is the hidden thing which is, which already has been, and which is to be. All that has been taken, it shall be restored. This eternal anthem for the glory of the Lord. So elegantly and wonderfully and beautifully sings Twyla Paris. Be blessed this day. <laughs>